And the score is already 3-0 to England. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but we were commentating on the football there for a second. Is that your vision for Sunday's game against Senegal, Graham, that will be 3-0 up early? Um, I, my vision for the Sunday's game against Senegal is that um, lots of people will, will be down the pub eating pine chips. I think drinking, there's every chance of that, isn't there? Drinking, it could be a... drinking pints. A few sore heads on Monday morning, possibly. I, I absolutely think so. Mm. So, we're back with another Wow Ergonomics. Hello, everybody. It's Friday. It's our usual time, uh, midday. Um, we're, we're trying to stick to this as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, and we're doing quite a good job of it. We've had the odd week where we've we've kind of surprised ourselves and done it on a different day. But we've we've always managed it at 12 o'clock, which is good. So, we have. that's good. We've got a couple of wonderful guests for you today. So we shall be bringing them in right now. Well, let's, let's bring in Claire first. There she is. Hello, Claire. Hi. Hi, Claire. Hi. Coming all the way from where, Claire, today? Uh, I am in South London today. South um, London. Sunny Streatham. Now, Chris, <laughs> you can't say afternoon chaps when there's a, uh, there's a lady present, okay? No, you can't. No, you can't. Take that back, <laughs> sir. Say yeah. afternoon everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chris. Nice, nice to have you uh, joining us uh, for this show, Chris Barlow. Um, you know, previously on the show. Oh, I like that. Afternoon colleagues. Yes, well, oh, we'll, we take, we'll take that one. Yeah, uh, yes. There we go. And we're now going to be joined as well by well, the magic of TV by <laughs> Mr. Anthony Mitchell. Look at that. Who's, who's actually uh, in somebody's house. Um <laughs> I am. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm quite embarrassed to had to say it to the client. I've been here since nine o'clock, just sorting out a really amazing young chap's new wheelchair. Um wow. And um, what is it? Twelve. And I. I'm. I'm feeling. Uh, I had to apologise to the therapists that are actually just through that door right now. Um, my, one of my colleagues is just helping to finish off the uh, handover uh, of an amazing new wheelchair. So. Um, yeah, I uh, she's kindly put me in 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 a lounge and said no problem. Use my Wi-Fi. So hey, we're all good. Do you know what? I just I think that's a lovely thing. Yeah, that, that's a lovely thing. That actually shows. Yeah. I tell you what, Anthony, you're the first person that's on the show that actually shows that they do some work. So that's yeah. like, <laughs> how rude. <laughs> Very rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, jo yeah, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, but seriously, yeah. it's great that you're actually at the coal yeah. face there. You know, yeah, um, no, it's great. It's it's been a good morning. Uh, it's been it's been lovely. So uh, I've promised um, the young man that I will um, come and see him after our chat and uh, make sure he's still getting comfortably. So it's all oh, good. That's tremendous, Claire. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with you. Just just for people that have never seen you before, your smiling face all all over social media, etc. Oh, <laughs> and what's that? Come on, is that um, is that? A cat or a moomin or, or or what? No, I think it's a unicorn cat. A unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Why do Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm okay. in a rush. <laughs> Claire, do do tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> sure. Um so my name is Claire. I am the CEO and founder of Bespoke Wellbeing, and we are a award winning now, yes, uh occupational health physio company. So we um help uh, companies across the UK helping to look after their staff so we do physiotherapy for staff we do a lot of DSE ergonomics workplace assessments we do long COVID rehab and we also do uh, sort of functional capacity capability assessments as well so um, our kind of specialism background is is you know work is good for health helping people get back into work when they have sickness and making sure people are safe and well in the workplace that's what we do thank you very much <laughs> Don't forget Brian. the dog, folks. The yeah. dog's got to be, have his say. Right. Uh, Anthony, tell us a bit about you. Well, I don't know how to follow up on Claire. I, that's like, what pen do you have? That is impressive. Um, yeah, no, look, um, I manage director um, along with my wife. Uh, we share, we started the business in 2004. Um, we look after... Um, Yorkshire, Lancashire predominantly, but now have really grown in the last five, six years and kind of range pretty much throughout the UK. Um, we do struggle with Devon and we do struggle with um, the Isle of Skye, but pretty much uh, we're pretty <laughs> inclusive. 
Um, so no offence to anyone in any of those areas today. Uh, it's not because we don't want to get there. Um, but um, we have the provision of in-home uh, seating um, for a huge range of clients, ranging from pediatrics, children, adults, um, and then that ranges through uh, to wheelchairs, bathing aids, um, and then alongside that, we do a lot of moving handling equipment as well. So, um, yeah, I would say that we are the leading supplier, but hey, there you go. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal industry to work in. It's a great job to be in. Uh, I still, even though, um, you know, have all the management side of things with running a business, probably Claire and Steve and Graham, you all get that. And probably most of the people on here maybe get that as well. I just never want to lose the actual hands-on assessment mm. working with the individual that we're doing it for. Um, mm. So yeah, but um, but, but yeah, um, but as a company, yeah, we we just really get excited about seeing people correctly. That's that's what we do. No, absolutely, Claire. You mentioned that you're you're involved with long COVID. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's obviously you know a, a new area. Um, yeah. How did how did how did you get start getting involved in that kind of work? I think um, so. Our, our we're quite a small company, and our team are fairly sort of senior. And our kind of background is looking after people with kind of complex um, conditions. So we, we work with a lot of persistent pain conditions, um, chronic fatigue. And I think when COVID came along, a few of our customers, sort of in the case management side, were like, "We need to help these people along COVID. Can you put together a program?" So. Um, that was at the sort of tail end of 2020. Um, and, you know, it's quite a tall order then because no one really understood <laughs> what, you know, exactly what it was. Are there subcategories? What does it need? What's going to be uh, clinically effective? Uh, so it was, you know, it was an exciting time for us to, you know, to, to pull that together. So that's kind of how we started. We were asked, basically, if we could help support these people with our kind of knowledge of getting helping people get back to work in that safe way so looking at the reasonable adjustments looking at equipment um yes yeah, so that's sort of how we came about and it has it has evolved i guess as time has gone on and we've learned more um, and we've been to sort of more uh, clinical focus groups and looking at the data and looking at what works what doesn't work um so yeah it's been really interesting uh, so we now do uh, we do all virtually so via videos so we do one-to-one -one and we do group sessions finally got an nhs contract under our belt so we're delivering yes. the, so Best. that's great um but yeah it's 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 super interesting and, and you know people that are struggling with long covid they are struggling to work so uh for, for a number of reasons so it's been really interesting for us to kind of get our teeth into that into that area Claire, what's the rate in which people are sort of coming out of long covid i mean is is it is it very very slow in terms of are you are you every month of, of the group of people you're working with do one or two people drop off that program or do you have some months where no one does drop off and or people get added what's the sort of the the movement on that sort of program yeah it's it's an interesting one we kind of earlier in the year kind of thought you know are things going to start to tail off a bit because obviously covid landscape has changed massively and um, but actually there's still i can't i haven't got the stats right right at my fingertips but you know there's still a huge number of people struggling with long covid and people that have been struggling for a very very long time and um, people obviously having covid a second time a third time some people are having exacerbations of long covid symptoms after vaccination so we're seeing all kinds of things sort of happening um in the landscape so currently it's super busy um people are very grateful to have any support if i'm honest um i think you know the the the, the service provision and the funding is 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 there it's coming it has been very patchy historically but i think it is generally getting better across across the uk now but some people have waited an awful long time they're very lost um you know they don't know kind of you know where to turn so um by the time they usually come into our service hopefully they have been sort of medically screened that there's nothing medically underlying that's causing the breathlessness and, and fatigue and things like that so they're sort of coming to us for those strategies and, and support back into the workplace so um in terms of drop-off rate um i think the reasons that people might drop off um is if we do do assess people we think, think actually they need uh, further investigation so we're not quite sure that they have been fully screened that tends to be um, one reason but i'd, I'd say the the adherence rate is actually quite good because people they want to learn and they want to understand and they want the strategies um 
so yeah i think it's still it's still very new i think that's the other thing we always say to people you know it, it is still very new and people with long covid they their symptoms can be so variable and they go they seem to you know some do just go through these, these waves and sometimes the waves have the trigger sometimes they don't and that can be highly frustrating for people when they feel like they haven't got control over that so um yeah it's, it's very interesting some people have covid they do quite well afterwards they recover but then couple of weeks months later they then suddenly drop into this sort of um symptomatic long covid so yeah it's, it's highly interesting it is it <laughs> is anthony yeah. ha, have you seen similar sort of you know changes in product uh innovation or, or technologies within your business oh well, um, yeah I mean, the, uh, I mean through, through covid we well pre, prior to covid we obviously haven't done any video consultations at all so you know if you just said to me in 2019 claire you're going to start doing physio sessions uh by video i would have told you you can't do it um and so we we as a company we've massively changed uh, the way that we deliver things and we're probably still not just the long covid but everything we're probably still a good 75 percent online and virtual so delivering key services on online so the team have you know they've changed their practice they've developed um upskilled um, i think our team are brilliant at delivering virtual care we do it all by video we don't do any uh, telephonic services it's all, all done by video based so in terms of the way that we deliver things it, it's massively massively changed obviously looking at our um kind of KPIs for customers, how quickly we can get people seen. It's so much quicker than having to try and arrange face-to-face -face services for, for people, for employees. So that's that's been, you know, one of the big bonuses and we can really standardise the care, I guess, because things are delivered virtually. The core team are doing it, all trained the same, following the same templates, following the same um, kind of training guidance that we're giving to the to the, the clients. So being able to reach those hard hard to reach places, I guess, and uh, standardise it across across the board has been has been really really good. And I think the other thing with the particularly long COVID is because it's a ever changing beast. Really, is looking at those the clinical effectiveness and looking at the data and looking at the outcome measures to make sure that what you're doing is making the intervention is making the difference that you want it. I mean, in a really black white sense, a lot of our referrers are are. Um, you know, case managers, their income protection, um, occupational health, HR, line managers. So in a stark sense, they kind of want to know their work status. <laughs> you know, you know, what is my return on my investment? And they want to obviously help their staff in any way they can. But, you know, they really want to see that value for money. So we, we look at a whole range of clinical outcome measures because we want to make that, you know, like you were saying, Anthony, you know, making that difference for the customer, for, for your patient, for your client, uh, but also for the funding party. They want to make sure that what, what they're offering there staff is is um, valuable you know and it's making the, the changes that they want to see so yeah it's it's changed a lot of things for us to be honest yeah, yeah. yeah. can i drop that question over to anthony as well did we, what what changes has covid made within your industry yeah i mean initially it was uh, like for everyone it was a massive like what is going on where does this position us like what, how do we run as a, as a company that predominantly go out and go in people's homes or hospitals, nursing homes, how do we manage? So yeah, initially it was like, whoa, how's this all going to function? Um, great, amazing team that, that we work with, uh, similar things were able to sort of kick off with like teams sort of suddenly went crazy, didn't it? Um, and uh, and Zoom things and, and everything else that went in with that. Uh, in terms of the functionality of the business, yeah, we, we had to get around deliveries and handovers and how do we do that in terms of because in how we, what we do and is you can't just it's not just a drop it at the door situation and say there you go knock yourself out so it's it's not a one size fits all all the things that we do are very bespoke in general and are made to measure um and, and we bring in different products and and match them up and and then effectively offer a a solution for the client so how did we get around that was very much with technology similar to what claire was saying in terms of could we make that work there were limitations for sure there were struggles uh because there's i still believe there's nothing is better than being in a room with somebody and working it out and and being hands-on um you know that's true right um but <laughs> What we were able to do is try and find solutions around that. So could we have somebody in the family? Could we do offer more training, online training? Could we um, be more in, on hand to be more contactable? Um, so all those things, I guess, have been such a positive because we've been able to take that from that 
time period and still run with that as well as go back into people's homes and still offer that mm -hmm. but i guess in terms of uh, the solution being on technology i guess was 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 really effective um mm -hmm. have there wasn't so much of I guess that we, we work in different sort of business, uh, Claire and I, but effectively we're still working with the end user. So it was trying to, um, how do, so I guess we have found real good solutions in terms of if somebody had a problem or they needed help and they already had the product. Yeah, that was great. That was, that was super. But to actually do the delivery and the handover and physically be that hands-on, there was a maybe six to eight week period where that was delayed for sure at that initial, uh, at the beginning of COVID, maybe March into May, June, that was a, a real sort of, but then we were very much uh, on the front line um, within six weeks. We were allowed in people's homes and nursing homes when allowed, when everyone, um, and yeah, we had to do the testing and go through all the uh, vaccinations like everyone else, but we were very fortunate. We were put on um, the vaccination list very, very early um, for all our staff. Uh, who were out in the front line. So that was really, really great. Um, you know, so yeah, it, 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 it's been a, it, it's funny. I don't know if you guys feel the same. It's funny to think back, like, because we mm. just, I feel like everything's sort of just been a hundred miles an hour since we were allowed to come out of COVID as such. And it just feels like a, not a distant memory because that would be wrong. And it's obviously clearly not for Claire because you're working mm. with, with clients who are, suffering with long COVID and will forever, you know, for a long, long time, as you say, um, you know, be, it will be so relevant. It will be so like it's happening now so feeling, but I guess for somebody who thankfully hasn't suffered with that, you know, uh, and I don't know if you guys uh, are the same or not, but you know, it feels like we've gone, we've gone back to how we were in, in a lot of ways and, uh, and we're functioning as we were, which is so great in some ways, but yet, let's try and learn from and take the things, the positives from it and the technology and um, maybe seeing clients more effectively in terms of speed and time. Um, those things mm -hmm. can only be positive for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, think I wonder, sorry, I was, I was just going to say, Claire, I wonder one, whether one of the things that we haven't necessarily learned from yet is, is the structure around things like assessments. Because I, I was having a conversation with a number of assessors last night Around, around workplace assess, uh, assessments, etc., and and going back to sort of like HSE and DSE, really, yeah, that, that now seems so outdated. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I think that seems so outdated. And and with with all of everything that we've learned over the past two years, and the fact that we've got you know we've got problems like long COVID, which are real problems, which mm. you know the, the assessment process doesn't necessarily even touch mm. in terms of you know where most people where most people are doing it is is it now time for maybe getting a steering committee to to work with hse and to actually really relook at what questions are being asked and, and what you know the starting point for most businesses in terms of where we should be assessing yeah i mean yeah that's it's a it's a big uh, big sort of question and topic that um yeah, I think I, I was commenting on someone's post the, earlier in the week about, um, you know, free and cheap assessments and, you know, but actually you spend on the equipment versus them paying people different amounts of money, because I think it's very confusing for people as well, having, uh, you know, a whole array of different assessors and um, backgrounds. Um, what questions are being asked? Do I just print a form off the HSC website, which is very obviously minimalistic uh, sort of self-assessment? Do I pay a physio to come in and um, what's the difference uh, what's the value and I think it, it's very tricky I mean we we've we've really grown the sort of b2b side of the spoke so we have a number of different services um, and you know we often will speak to the client to really try and find out what is it that they need what are the questions that they need answering what are, you know what are the, the challenges that they're having because not everybody needs this big you know meaty assessment but equally this one's not going to cut the mustard you're not going to get yeah. weak from it and it's going to be leaving loads of gaps um so it, it, you know it, it is tricky no i think you're right i think i think people's understanding of of the guidelines and what is available and what is out there and what they need 
is quite sparse and that there's a lot of confusion and um, some people have not even got it on the radar <laughs> um, and yeah. you mentioned a good point there about you know people knowing what to do and you know sort of requirements and things and I think through COVID there was this big wasn't there sort of the HSC hasn't released what these employers are supposed to be doing about their home workers and then obviously they've been yeah. caught up but um you know we often find when we speak to companies uh, I, you know the head in the sand analogy where they just don't really know what's going on um with the home workers and the office workers clearly the office workers there's less um there's you know they, they could be doing anything uh, and no one's no manager's going to walk past and see them you know sitting upside down on their laptop um, so it's it's tricky and i think you, you do at some point need to just draw that line in the sand as an employer and go i need to at least have a look at what is going on and i think mm -hmm. for that purpose i think the basic kind of self-assessment or getting a, a you know a company where you can do sort of the basic bse checklist and rag rate and go do you know what 80 percent of your people are green they're all good um depends on a lot of factors but we generally find there's a massive bulk that are green they're all fine then you yeah. get a smaller you know sort of middle portion i don't know 15 percent or something that actually they're amber they they're okay but they could do with some standard kit they, they're working off the laptop they need a razor and a you know, keyboard and mouse whatever but they're not really having many problems they'll be fine just just order this standard kit then you have this smaller section still that actually they do have health conditions they have long covid they have a uh, you know something that would be uh, classified under the equality acts of disability they you know they have significant rsi uh, whatever you know, might be going on and they're the people where i always think these these self-assessment checklists or basic assessments they just they don't touch the sides um, and you know we do a lot of work we do a lot of on-site for do work and and um sort of looking at their the way they manage their dses and the equipment and um, procurement and uh, a lot of them will say well i've done that self-assessment tool but it said i don't need anything but they're yeah. paid really related to when they're working in their home office for example but they don't get it when they're in the off main office yeah. so something is something's going on um, and we do know that people that work from home they often um they often are moving about quite a lot. They're putting the washing on, they're getting a cup of tea, they're going to the fridge for a snack. They, you know, they are quite sort of mobile, but you know, those conditions that they're working in, you know, and it, I think those basic assessments, that's where it gets a bit grey and a bit lost. And then they, they're not quite sure what to do because the line manager thinks, well, they've done the, I've done my bit, I've done the assessment and it hasn't flagged anything. And the employee thinks, well, I've done what they asked me and it's not said anything, so I'll leave. Yeah. And they can't get the physio, you see. <laughs> Well, it was it was talking to it was talking to Dan Williams in particular last night, and mm. who who does VI and HI assessments, and and, and yeah. he said an interesting thing, which is obviously with something like uh, you know a, a, someone losing their sight, for example, he yeah. said as, as as assessors, one of the things they do is they will start with that person at home. <laughs> You know, you can't you can't necessarily just start with it within the office and go, well, how's it affecting you in the office? Because he said, you know, knowing what it's like to lose your sight, he will know that that person may be struggling with how do they get to the office? How do, how do they how do they, you know, uh, f find their clothes in the morning to put the clothes on? How, how do they, you know, find their way to work? How all, all of those things So that for some people, there's definitely sort of a blending between both Anthony's world and your world, Claire, you know, how somebody with people with particular disabilities or whatever yeah, will, will have and be impacted in terms of how they live their general life at home. But then that then impacts how they can function at work, because if yeah. the two aren't looked after, yeah, it, it's not going to work. It's not yeah. holistic. It's not a holistic solution, is it? No, and I think, I mean, I love Dan uh, and Zodiac, <laughs> the dog. Um, I've been to one of Dan's training and he had these cool glasses and he was like, this is what it looks like if you have cataracts and you put the glasses on and this is what it looks like if you have this and put them on and you think, wow, you know, that's crazy that someone, you know, as you were just saying, how would they access and egress the building? Like that is quite marked and scary like that, you know, that how that employee might be feeling. And um, yeah, I love Dan and I think, I think part of it is, um, I, th I think it's just said earlier is is knowing what is available and um, there isn't just like this is a DSE assessment this is you know a workplace assessment there are so many different people that deliver it and I am forever um flying dance flag actually I'm always like this is the visual impairment this would be much better off I, I don't think this is for our network I would be much more comfortable if Dan saw this person because you know we're not gonna we're probably gonna put in our recommendations they need a specialist visual impairment assessment, uh, workplace assessment. So I think it's professionals that do do these types of assessment, recognising when they get those referrals in, 
where is that best place to get people with the right person first time you know and um, i'm seeing danny clark's line now <laughs> um but you know it's there are so many different professionals there are different styles of assessments so we we do the dse advanced dse workplace assessments we do physical capability assessment functional capacity and it depends what the challenges are and what the question is what and what they they you know what outcome they're looking for um to try and determine what service would be best sometimes you have to start with one and <laughs> but I think it's people knowing what their boundaries are, what their scope is, but also educating educating the people that are are looking into these types of referrals. And Anthony, I'm sure. I mean, I've not met you before, uh, but I'm going to follow you on LinkedIn after this. And um, cool. you know, there'll, there'll be absolutely times when actually this is not probably for us. This is you know, and knowing who those other professionals are and what services are out there, ones that you can trust that you can go actually. Yeah. As I say, you'd be much better placed in this in, in this service. So. Yeah. Um, do, do, do you feel the same way, Anthony, that there's, you know, there's, for a lot of people, there there is that overlap, you know, there's there's their work life, there's there's what happens at home, and actually, it's a, it's about professionals like yourself and Claire and, and Dan, etc., working together, that's how we get the, you know, these proper holistic solutions together for people. 100%, 100%, I mean, you know, we've, we're, we'd look at it as two separate things. I mean, you know, we will get involved, you know, with postural management as, you know, um, uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is functional, right? So, you know, you're you're basing that based on how you're sitting at home, how you're sleeping in bed, how you're accessing the computer at home, but then work life's a whole different ball game, right? So um, we are lucky enough, like where we will, um, work with clients and they'll receive funding like through access to work or something like that um, and you know we will still approach that like what Claire was saying but you know when you guys are talking about assessments I know that you're talking about lots of different there's quite a lot of derivatives derivatives I should say within what you're describing for us it's very much like we're coming in and we're going to be like hands-on from pretty much the word go um, and we're going to work through that process and we're going to make sure that that person um etc posturally is going to be right which is similar to what i presume you guys do um however somebody sitting at a desk or accessing a desk going through to the staff kitchen etc if they're in a wheelchair and are non-mobile or non-weight bearing is a whole different ball game right so um to what they might need at home um so yeah we will 100 percent be the you know looking at it from that point of view but in an answer to your question equally if i went in and met somebody and they were like they didn't need directly what i'm what i'm supplying um yeah absolutely we should be working with um people like ourselves like you guys to be able to sidestep and say look thank you for giving us a call but you know actually this is who you need to be speaking with this is who you need to be dealing with um, mm -hmm. and i think collectively then we're going to see a much better quality of service assessment provision across mm. the board right yeah. so I, and i guess that's what we're trying to achieve with this show graham isn't it really is is getting more people aware of more people who are out there because there are <laughs> yeah, loads of people yeah. who can add those different layers on so whilst it might yeah. not be in your area there is somebody yeah. out there so again this is why it's great to pull you guys together and obviously dan who we know as well just to sort of keep sort of sharing the story and you know if someone does go down a certain route hits a it's a bit of a buffer actually they do know where to go because ultimately yeah. what we're trying to look to do is, is to really benefit that end user aren't we however we do it whether it's through our services or somebody else is giving them and supporting them with whatever they need and, mm, I, and I think yeah. that I think the time is right now for it and, and I'm not saying just because we've come out of a pandemic although I do think that that has kind of made us all stop and think and, and perhaps reevaluate. but I, I do f feel that I'm seeing with the work that I do as well, I'm seeing a different generation of leadership out there. I'm seeing new, younger CEOs coming into to business who are much more concerned with the overall health and well-being of their people, mm -hmm. and that's that's further up the agenda than it was before. Whereas, <laughs> you know, it was it was always kind of like. Oh, do we have to do that? You know, it's now it's it's no, we, we, we built this into the philosophy of, of and, how and we're going to run things. Well, you think, Graham, though, as well as that, because I agree, 
but that that actually being that company, being that leader in the way of that thought process is actually more attractive to an employee who's Correct. looking at going going and working for somewhere and actually saying, yeah. wait a minute here, you're giving us private health, you're looking after uh, my workplace, um, you're looking at how I'm getting to from work to home and back again, you're looking at like, am I feeling okay? You know, just some that are asked. And if you're getting that vibe when you go in and get an interview or you're talking to people who already work there or whatever, that's just going to raise the bar in terms of, you know, um, your company, who you're working with, the quality of the person that's going to be attracted to working with. I think absolutely, um, you know, twofold in it, um, that it's going to be a positive, like for mm -hmm. sure. I know you've got to run. Claire, so, so one quick last question within that. Do, do you find that you're starting to see the signs of that? Are people perhaps being a little bit more proactive, maybe looking at sort of coaching and training and, and you know, awareness first as well before even needing the assessment process so that actually there's a better understanding on the ground of, of, of what people need? Yeah, I think um, because our services are all delivered by clinicians, we probably get less involved with sort of the high sort of volume um, kind of DSE screening. Um, but I think I think employees have had to address health and wellbeing because obviously the the pandemic has really shaken the health and wellbeing tree massively. It's become the you know the forefront of you know things, and um, you know with the recruitment issues that are going on in the UK at the moment you have to you know it's imperative that they're they're looking after the health and well-being of staff because um as anthony said you can get a vibe like straight away like at interviews talking to a couple of the team members you'll know you know you can tell very very quickly um and you know you can ask potential new new employers you know you know what what is their take on staff well-being and, and health and well-being and you can sort of see um and also staff retention you know so i think I think it, it has to be at the forefront, really. And I, you know, you do you do see it. It's it's um, more at the forefront of, of their minds for sure. Um, I still don't think we're there with the proactive approaches. I, I haven't seen a lot of it. Um, a lot of talk. Um, some some companies are doing a fantastic job, you know, but um, I still think there's a bit of a way to go. If I'm honest. Yeah, we. But then we we naturally see a lot of the reactive things. Mm. Um, but you know, budgets are tight <laughs> in places. So I think it's it's you know it's difficult there is that but we keep trying and that's what well ergonomics is all about so if we can you know we'll keep pushing we'll be here keep until it the happens. Words. yeah and yeah. then you know like a good charity we'll be here until there's no need for us and and then then we'll do something else instead yeah. so <laughs> there you go uh claire anthony it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today um as i say i know thank you very claire, much you, need to need to run but thanks for taking the time out to to come on um um anthony likewise uh if yeah, people to chat to want to connect with anthony claire they're on linkedin uh they are on yeah. other platforms as well i know because i've stalked them um so <laughs> do do the same uh and and connect with them in fact we'll put the links to anthony and claire on the website which is well ergonomics.com so thank you both for coming in today thanks for having me Thanks, both. Cheers. Thank you both. Wow. And then there were two. And then there were two. What a then fantastic guest. Wow. Brilliant. Fantastic, fantastic guest. You can yeah. always tell it's good guests, Graham, when me and you don't say very much. Well, uh, <laughs> and that's <laughs> a good got thing, much, right? They've got, yeah, yeah, and they've got that yeah. much to say. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I was thinking, we haven't said very much, but that's because there was so much good information coming from, from Anthony. I, and Claire. I, exactly. Well, and I like it because, you know, it gives me a break. Um, yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise i'll just talk all day oh we know you uh, would yeah exactly well you know that's what some of us pay to do so it's, yeah. it's fine it's fine um but no really interesting and i it's it's interesting to get people from different fields on as well um yeah. interesting to to hear about someone like anthony they're live from somebody's home where yeah. they you know they're fit, fitting a wheelchair and, and it's lovely to see that ca that that kind of caring service that mm. you know it's not just being delivered by a box and i think that's so important to understand um in this day and age as well it's something that we've perhaps talked about with some of the other sort of supplies of of, of product um on this show is that there's such a vast difference between yeah just buying something having it delivered by the smiley face box 
um, and, you know, and then being left to your own devices or having someone that takes you through what that, yeah. that product does for you and helps you set it up and helps you understand here's how to use it. Because that's where you get the real benefit yeah. of any product, I think. Yeah. How much did and you I actually yourself? and I actually did well. I did that yesterday. Funny enough, not that this was sort of set up, but I did that yesterday. I went out with one of our um, sort of main sort of partners or resellers, and we did a demonstration of a whole suite of our products with their council, um, who were obviously you know focused around sort of sort of the health and safety department who were really focused. And it was quite interesting. They sort of said how much they enjoyed it, and actually I did as well. Old fashioned, getting the product out the box walking you through the product and talking about it and they said it's just it's brilliant that you get back to that because yeah i could send them over links to websites and videos but actually seeing the product touching and feeling it really added a lot of value and products that there may be or features of products that maybe wouldn't come across when they got it in front of them and oh actually yes it does this this and this so it, do you, you know, still we... love that moment where you get something out of a box and they and like people are looking at it and they're going like what's that uh yeah is it is it uh it's no i don't actually know what is it (laughs) do you know what the product i get it with the most you know when a product you'll know well and i'm not getting too specific here is is things like a document holder yeah i was going to say flex desk yeah Yeah, which was the one i did yesterday and and you still people sort of go oh it's a foot rest (laughs) and you sit there and you're putting it together and what is it and then and it's still a product that i know speaking to my colleagues in other countries is a product that's sort of it's a well-worn path it's a product that they've known for a long time. I just find with my experience, when you go out and show people, you know, instead of having paper all over your desk, getting in front of you, working between the width of your shop, it's still something that I don't think we've really fully got our heads around with in this country. I no. still think because people think, oh, I don't work with paper. Actually, you oh. do. The, paper, the whole paperless office thing is a bit of a sort of a fallacy. But that's the one product that I think when you do lift it out and, you, and they go, that's interesting what's that do you know what that's really good I, he could use that she would use that and it's like well it, it's there it's just an awareness piece you're actually taking me back to my assessment days the amount okay. of times the amount of time Stephen, mm. that i'd be in an office and i'd actually say you're right so do you do you work uh, you know you you may be going through a, a list of things that you've got to ask and you go mm. you know do you work with do you work with paper no no, no, don't worry. And, okay. and I and I, I would typically at that point, I would go, okay, I'll tell you what, just show me typically. I'm, I'm just going to sit back here for 10 minutes. Just show yeah. me typically what kind of work you do for the day. And then <laughs> sit there at the computer and they'd be like this. And then they go, oh, yeah. get this. Uh, don't work with paper, though, Graham. No, don't work this, with paper. Get this. Right. So, um, write, write a few notes. And you stop them and go, no, when you said you don't work with paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you do that that thing that you just show me you're doing do you do that quite a lot oh yeah i do that all day yeah yeah paper because people yeah but, but the thing is people don't necessarily equate hmm. the fact they they people are so attuned to the fact that they they use technology yeah they kind of forget actually i write little notes to one side hmm. or you know i've got a post-it note block there and i write on that or, um, you know, I, I can't work from something else on the screen or I've only got a limited size screen. So what I do is I actually I print out some information and then I put it to one side of me and then mm. I, you know, I, I make reference to that. Or somebody sends me a document and because of the way that my mind works, I can't can't edit it on the screen. So I print it out and I scroll through it and I go this bit, this bit, this bit, and then I put it in front of me. You know, and typically, you know, and people do it. They put it in front of the, on top of the keyboard. Yeah. And then they go, oh, I can't type now because it's on on top of the keyboard. So what what do they do? They push the keyboard right back behind this bit of paper. And then they sit there. And then they're leaning over like this. So that's what that product's all about. You know, Mm. it's a, it's a, it's a very simple solution. Yeah. Which says you actually, you do, you work with paper. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you work with paper you work with books you work with uh periodicals that people send you you work with yeah. you know uh it's like people are embarrassed to say they still work with paper yeah <laughs> it's like they don't want to be judged no I, I don't work with paper no 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 i do really but you know it, yeah. it, it is one of those things yes you do that it's as simple as that and i and i think you'll find that 
an element of that is uh, people don't want to be seen as targeted as sort of old school yeah. or, or, or of a particular age. Um, and maybe it's like they don't want to necessarily talk about any kind of neurodiversity that they've got as well, that they may yeah. may actually mm. struggle in terms yeah. of comprehending information if it's if it's pr provided to them on the screen and they're actually trying to multitask across the screen. And so for a lot of people, printing it out and having it in a separate place yeah. really works. And I, I think it's I think it's important that people recognize these different different ways of working. I mean it, it's absolutely fine. I've got right here, I've got a I've got a lovely bit of technology. Yeah, look at that. Okay. It's called a, a called a whiteboard. Um yeah. uh, with a different set of color bits of pen. Now Lots of people would say, "Oh, yeah, but why are you still doing that? Because you could uh, you could actually do that on the computer-based program." But yeah, for me, but... for me, it's just so much better if I just write one one word in a yeah. coloured bit of pen there, and then cross it out when I've done it. Mm. You know, and I think that's it's really important. You know, it's that's... a bit like a, an old-fashioned to-do list on paper. I still have in front of me a pad, a pen. You know, and I still will write down the list. You can do all sorts of things, but there's nothing wrong with just having it there in handwriting and under your nose. Now, let's get people a little bit excited about okay who we've got coming up in the next few weeks because we have got a, a wonderful roll call mm. of, of decent people coming up. So, um, we we have the wonderful Mark Walker coming up. Yes, um, who's got a new, he's he's. Uh, business has changed their logo. They've got like stones balanced on top of each other. Yeah. Now, yeah. So, um, oh, and he's, he's got a great business card thing as well that he's been talking about on LinkedIn. That have you seen that? Oh, oh tell us about that. No, no, he can tell us about that next oh, week. Yeah, that's remind it. me asking yeah. about some business card thing. Wooden business want, card. If, if you, yeah, if you want to find out about a really cool business card thing, it's yeah. not, it's, it's not, it's business cards, but not as you would know it. No, no, he's right? your man. He's your man, and he'll be in next week. And and then who else have we got coming up? Um, I'm trying to think. We, well, we just confirmed our first guest for for January. So we've got the uh, the brilliant safety elf, Alison Thompson's joining us um, first week, first Friday back after Christmas. She's, She's incredibly, on the show. incredibly jovial. Uh, uh, I always like Alison. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we've got someone else who we haven't had a date confirmed for January, but we'll keep that one under our hat. But watch um, watch out for LinkedIn and the and the website for revealing who that will be. But but basically, unlike previous uh, generations of the show, where yeah. uh, we we you know we scrabbled to get a guest together right, right at the last minute. Um, like fewer <laughs> than now. Oh, I tell you who we've got on. Harold Floyd. Yes. Now, that's not Harold Lloyd, the old no. black and white <laughs> no. comedy comedian. No, because he's long gone. Um, bless his cotton socks. So, um, if anyone has safety hasn't seen, guru, legend. yeah, big mm. chap. Um, was he ex uh, Marines or? Oh, I think so. Yeah, oh, I got, you got to be yeah. careful in case we say the wrong wrong one and he's yeah. offended. But he's uh... well, he's 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 ex. Um, you know, could could you know kill you um, yeah. type thing. And uh, yeah, he's he's going to be coming on, and he, he does he does fantastic videos. On, he does great videos on LinkedIn, on social media. You know, yeah. where he's like lifting up forklift trucks with one hand and saying, "Don't do that." Um, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> and we're all going, well, we couldn't yeah. anyway. So, uh, you know, but yeah, no, he's, he's great. He does a lot of manual, manual handling training yes. and stuff like that. So if, if, if that's uh, something that you're interested in, if you, if your company's looking for someone that can help you bend and stretch and lift things properly, uh, without hurting your back, he, he will be along shortly as well. So and the just, other person who we're just confirming a date for is Simone Fenton Jarvis. We're just waiting to get a date confirmed for her. She's the author of The Human Centric Workplace. So we're just waiting to get that all confirmed. So we're hoping to get her on mid January on the show. So that'll be a fascinating. Uh, that's a, that's a real on. life author with someone that actually understands the English language, which is great yeah. um, because you know, <laughs> we don't. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's like I put on the the preface to to today's show. I said it's uh, with your usual, or should I say, unusual guest, uh, yeah. unusual host, <laughs> Raymond Stephen. Oh, you know, 
No, Surely there it is. I, I think we're we're beginning to get a really lovely set of people through on mm. this program, and, and we're getting getting some good things. So one of the things that I do want us to 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 talk about and keep talking about is that whole piece around the assessment piece, because I think um, I'd like us to challenge it a little bit, and I think it would be good to to find out from uh, other people out there that are working within the assessment sector do carrying out ergonomic or workplace assessments what what do you think is it about time that we had a little bit of a, a review of uh, the dse assessment process um you know how could we how could we improve that are, are we asking the right questions you know is it is it really relevant in this day and age that we're asking how far away from the computer screen are you i mean that question was set when we used to have crt monitors yeah right you remember those right we once upon a time girls and boys for anyone that's uh of the, of the wrong generation uh mummies and daddies used to go to work and work with computer screens which actually were about a meter deep on the desk and that's why you had the curved desks wasn't it because you had to put the monitor in the corner so you had the depth of desk to take the depth of the monitor yeah yeah absolutely and they were they were sold as ergonomic desks yeah. because if you didn't if, yeah exactly because if you didn't have that that curve to, to put the monitor into the, the monitor was up here and that, <laughs> clearly that was that's not good for it yeah yeah <laughs> the, the fact that actually some of those early mo monitors were like flashy green and green and black or, or orange and black and actually yeah. made your eyes go funny anyway mm. that, that nothing to do with it but um and then came came the onset of uh flat flat screen monitors but the point is technology's change the way people work a change and actually, from what Claire was saying, I found that whole long COVID piece incredibly interesting, that the kind of issues and conditions that people are dealing with, they've changed as well. Mm. Is it now time that, you know, with hybrid, with remote working, with the different conditions, with the different ways of working, we have to now start looking at that question set and saying, actually, even as a base kind of criteria, maybe this needs to change yeah um and i and i think one of the things that i'm hearing is maybe we should start asking more open questions more about what are you actually struggling with or you know rather than sort of yes or no questions which but that but a lot of it derives from that sort of sort of checklist mentality the checklist mentality is a closed question isn't it it yeah. wants an answer that goes in a box yes or and no you can't and you can't provide that that isn't whilst parts of it will be relevant the broader piece needs to be conversational and it have to be those horrible big boxes where you have to write lots of information and you know people oh i don't like them i prefer a checklist but the checklist is is really not opening up the conversation and really getting to the root of the problem Correct. I mean, here's 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 a starting challenge for any of you okay. HR managers that are out there today that are, that are listening. When someone does a DSE assessment at the moment and they are asked the question, when did you last have an eye test? And the answer comes back, <laughs> never, or three years ago or whatever. What happens next? What happens next yeah. within your organization? What, what does that then trigger? I'd love to start to hear the answers from people mm. out there because it's, again, it's fine having those, in a way, it's fine having those yes, no answers. But what does that, what does that then trigger? Because if it doesn't actually trigger an action, it, it's not, it's not dealing with it, is it? Yeah. It's not actually going anywhere. Mm. So, you know, just for example, I mean, when I used to actually set out um, the schedule for, for for DSE with companies and I was controlling it all myself, one of the things I would do is if someone came back and they said, I haven't had an eye test within a certain period, they were then sent a letter saying, you need to have an eye test. Yeah, there's a voucher. Uh, at, Go and get at, yourself. Here's a voucher. Out. Yeah. And then that was followed up on to make sure that they'd had that. And if ultimately then they refuse to have that there would be a warning yeah you know but you've you've got to actually kind of build in a structure in there that says well you know that this this is a compliance within this this business it's not just a you know we're asking you because we're we're a little bit interested it should be 
we're asking you because we want to know and if it's if it's not done we're going to insist that you have it done mm. because otherwise we we haven't got a marker as to as to where to take this and i know that's a really difficult thing for a lot of businesses to to grasp because you know there's all sorts of legal shenanigans around that but ultimately how can you be effective in applying uh, a DSC assessment or a workstation assessment if you don't, don't have that then structure of follow through with it yeah. so that's an open question to any HR people out there mm -hmm. please please you can anonymously um, by changing your name on LinkedIn uh, or <laughs> on any other platform just respond and let us know there you go I scrapped that that's really interesting from Chris there you go I scrapped I was gonna I was hoping that that uh, young man would comment yeah have the conversations instead and that's really that's really important and I think that is something that I'm hearing from a lot of top assessors that actually maybe maybe actually the problem is that there is a checklist maybe you know the 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 HSE guidance dare I say it, ought to actually say there is a professional route through this and and you should be trying to follow this kind of professional mm. route and here's a, here's you know here's lists of people that do this properly so of which chris go. barlow will be on that list uh, and of course yeah chris barlow uh and and claire and and, and most of the people that we have on this program yeah. would be on that would be on that list. absolutely okay well that's been an absolutely fantastic show um Brilliant. i really you. enjoyed that conversation um i'm gonna i'm gonna carry on talking to anthony i'm gonna find out a little bit more about his business and um you know because i think it's incredibly useful if if, mm. if you've got somebody at home that has got disability um issues and and is struggling with uh their independence at home anthony seems like a, a great person to talk to about trying to solve that yeah um and the whole long COVID. if you're struggling with long covid please go and talk to claire because i think it's it's great that they've got that service there now mm. specifically around that and it's really helping um that and i guess one of the one of the aspects of that that will really be helping is she's actually probably bringing together in a community and i know that from her her instagram um a, a group of people that are going through the same thing because yeah. it like all of these things when something happens and it feels like it's only you that's quite difficult to to deal with uh, from a mental perspective as well so just knowing that there's other people going through the same thing and and perhaps being able to to share with other people going through the same thing is really really helpful so great work and there, also Claire. one thing I've, you probably picked up on Graham, which you said the funding was either there or was coming through so it sounds like it's something where the the, the money and resources is there to really address this this whole long covid phenomenon yeah no absolutely i you know uh, it's f fortunately touch wood um i haven't had the old dreaded c word yet mm. um i've had i've had my latest jab though there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my four o'clock uh, dentist appointment has been cancelled because the phone call came through and they said, "I'm sorry, Mr. Howe, but the dentist has got the C COVID. word." Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's it's it, it's it is something that we're going to live with for a long, long time, and without a shadow of a doubt. And actually, you know, I guess the great fear is that something else is going to come along in its place yeah. at some point as well. Um, and I, I, without getting too political, I do hope we, <laughs> as as a as a human race, actually take note of the warnings that we've been given by certain people. That yeah. unless we make certain changes, uh, it will happen again, mm. and none of us want to see that happen. So, and until next time, uh, yeah. we next will Friday. be back again next Friday. By which time, um, England hopefully we'll have beaten Senegal is that right well if we it's haven't some... beaten them it's one hell of a long penalty shootout that's still going on yeah, so yeah, we, we'll, we'll have a result it's... we'll have a result by next Friday <laughs> it's 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 on this <laughs> this Sunday unless you're watching this on repeat and it's already gone you, um so hopefully hopefully we will have had a result uh you'll all be in a happy mood still thinking yep. that we're going to win the World Cup whether we will or we won't 
But I mean, it does cheer the nation up for five minutes, doesn't it? it um, does. And on that that bombshell, yes, we leave you with Wow Ergonomics. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye bye.